Hi, Sean and Ashlyn with a Vectorworks tutorial today, taking a look at the Revolve with Rail command found in the 3D Power Pack. This is actually a viewer suggested tutorial. The guy emailed me saying he wanted to create a Chinese pagoda roof, and how would I go about doing that? Now, there's probably a couple of different ways to do that. The, probably the best is Revolve with Rail. Now, Revolve with Rail is kind of a persnickety little command, and if you're just playing with Vectorworks and you come across it and you just want to mess around with it to see how it works, you can get frustrated quickly. Uh, but it's really worth learning how to do it properly because you can create some exciting shapes, like some of the examples you see here on the screen. However, I don't do it enough to remember all of those fussy little steps. So I'll just jump into the, uh, the help just type in Revolve in the help, you can find it really quickly. And the article is actually pretty short, that's all there is to it. But this will just refresh your memory about all the little ways that you need to set up the, uh, the command to get it to work properly. Now the difference between Revolve with Rail and a regular sweep object is that we're not creating a cone uh, or a 360 degree shape, we're creating this rail object, that's the hexagon in this example, and uh, giving it a certain number of sides to the shape. So, for example, this shape right here, the red one has the hexagon, the, the six sides. It's exactly the same as what we're about to do here. But this one over here with the stripes has 12 sides in it. So how many different sides you create is part of the uh, the variables in this. And then the other is the profile shape that you use. You can get different shapes of, uh, of the curve to your profile. So the three parts that you need, let me show you how to set this up. I'm going to switch over here to wireframe so you can see the colors a little bit better. And by the way, these colors are simply to make it easy to see in the tutorial. They can all be black when you go to do it, of course. Uh, the blue line is our axis. It is the, the center pole, basically, the tent pole of our shape that we're about to create. And it wants to be nice and vertical. And the green line is the profile, what I was just talking about a second ago. That, that shape there is going to show you how the curve of your object is going to appear. And then the purple shape, the hexagon in this case, is the, the rail. And that's showing us the footprint of the object or how many sides the shape will have when you're done. Now I created the rail simply using the regular polygon tool and just setting the number of sides. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. Just go to top plan view or whichever is appropriate and just draw your shape. Now the, the center axis here, I just used the regular line tool in front view and just drew it straight up, made sure that it was exactly center to my uh, my hexagon. Now I did use the the NURBS curve tool in front view to create the profile. So I just clicked on these different little shapes and made sure it was nice and flat. However, if you're going to use anything 2D like what I did to use the uh, the polygon tool and the line tool, you're going to need to convert those to NURBS curves. So if we select this hexagon, you can see that it is a NURBS curve. So is the axis. Even though it's a straight line, it's still considered a NURBS curve. So how you do that is select what you want to alter, jump up here to the modify menu, open that up and find convert and then convert to NURBS. And that little command there will turn a 2D object or some other kind of shape into a NURBS curve. And all three of these want to be NURBS curves for this to work. Now I did draw this NURBS curve with the tool. However, if you're going to do that, see what I've got here is a couple of 3D loci. I've got one right at the center of the hexagon, right at the bottom of my axis. And I've got another one right here where I wanted that curve to fall. So if I select this profile and I jump into top plan view here, you can see that it's perfectly flat, perfectly coplanar, so that my center axis and the, the line, the NURBS curve that I'm using to create the profile are all perfectly flat. If you have any little bit of a bend in here, any little deflection, if you're giving it basically, if you're giving it a third degree, uh, it's going to fail. It wants to be completely 2D even though it has to, has to be moving in, in the, the Z axis. So things like using the endpoints, using your screen hints, or using the 3D loci are going to be ways that you can do that. The other thing that you're going to want to worry about too is that, I'll jump over into front view and zoom way in here, like 10,000% or something, zoom way into this guy. And you can see here's the, the blue line there, that's the axis, and here is the green line, that's the, the profile. And you can see in my example, I've got a little bit of a gap, even though I'm zoomed crazy, you know, six almost 7, 000, 7 million percent, uh, it's still got a tiny little microscopic gap. Now this endpoint can come over here and touch this endpoint, and that's fine. In fact, that's probably the best because then you won't have any hole at the top of your tent. But what it can't do is cross this line. And you can see I've put mine right on the zero axis here of the workspace just to keep it nice and tidy. If this line crosses over the axis line, it's going to fail. Basically, what you'd be asking it to do is creating a funny little cup shape here at the top 
of your tent and it, it can't do that it will fail so let's back out to a reasonable percentage here and I think we're all set up so get everything nice and coplanar nice and flat don't cross the beams and make sure that all three of your parts are, are all NURBS curves and the actual operation is really very simple so I'm going to jump in here to the model menu and find the 3d power pack now I'm going to go ahead and revolve with rail and we're following the directions at this point it's basically asking us to select the axis first so that's our blue line and I click on it and you don't actually see the highlight until you move off of the shape that can be confusing at first now it's asking for the profile that's our green line I'm gonna click on that so far no error messages we're in pretty good shape so when I go ahead and click the rail the hexagon in this case it's gonna go ahead and create that shape so let's do that now so I'm gonna click on that last object and there it is jump back over into OpenGL and we can see we've got a nice little tent or a pagoda roof or a pavilion or whatever we're after uh, we could be done this may be the actual shape that we're after however I suspect my guy with the, the pagoda is gonna want this bottom line right here to be curved like a pagoda frequently is so how do you go about messing with this shape at this point well if you select it and we take a look in the object info notice we've got a group here it's a group of NURBS surfaces and like any other group we can jump into that group and start messing with it so I'm gonna double click on the shape now and enter the the group workspace and notice I've got six NURBS surfaces so I'm clicking somewhere else to deselect now I can come in here and grab just one of these sides and hit delete and just open it up if I wanted certainly you could I mean maybe the shape you're after is actually this shape you know you're trying to create a sail or some kind of awning or whatever you can use this command and just grab one of the surfaces and delete the others because this is actually the shape that you might be after uh, or we can mess with one or all of the shapes uh, at the vertices level I can also come in and just change the color for example that's how I got the striped tent this guy with the 12 sides I came along here and selected every other surface and then made those blue and then I got a nice little stripe tent so you can do that or we can come in here to the 2d reshape tool here or the, the reshape tool and uh, select that and start messing with these at the vertice level so if I jump in here to the working plane mode and the point mode I can grab one of these corners for example and make it look like the tent flap is open let's just try that see how that looks there we go yeah basically kind of pull back one of the little flaps to our little TP there and created that look however uh, what we also want to do or at least the pagoda pavilion guy wants to do is bend the middle of this but vectorworks has created the shape with the minimum number of vertices that it needs so we need to add an extra vertice here to this so we've got basically two going this way I've got because I put that little bend in my original profile shape I clicked once I clicked again kind of a bezier curve and then I clicked again that means that I've got an extra middle bending point that's this guy in the middle here uh, but I've only got the one going in the other direction so how we can fix that is by the way be, be aware that you can jump from entire object mode to vertex only mode and then by clicking these little buttons here you can see that I'm clicking that little round button and it's flashing which vertex is selected so you can jump around and select different vert vertices here and then actual type in actual movements so you can move these guys in a very precise way but what we actually want to do right now is just come in here to our uh, the V of our UV uh, surface there and add an extra set of vertices so if I type in two in there and I hit enter now I've subdivided the shape and you see what that's done is given me a, a vertice right here in the middle which is what I'm after so I can jump in and select the Z axis constraint mode so I'm only moving it up and down I don't want to be moving in, in random directions and I'm gonna leave it in the the vertex mode zoom in a little bit here and I'm gonna select just this one guy and deflect just that one shape I've got a pretty nifty curve going on there that's kinda of cool except we've done we've got a little problem in here and we've torn the tent so you can see there's a little bit of a gap now the way we could fix that is to go around all the other five sides and do the exact same thing that would take a long time and it would be hard to get it perfect so what we actually want to do at this point is I'm just going to jump into the, into the top plan view and I'm going to select the other hold the shift key down select the other five surfaces here as I missed one and delete them now I've got just this one surface left I'm going to select that one and you can go up here to edit or better learn the duplicate array control shift alt D uh, command select that and we're in a circular array with five duplicates we've got a 60 degrees because we're working with a hexagon here 
We've got our next mouse click ready to go. And of course we want rotate and retain. We want our original one set up. So this is all ready to go for us. So we can say, okay. And now we've got a little crosshairs and we're gonna go right to that endpoint or right to the 3D locus, whatever, whatever's right at the center of our tent and click. And now we've got the other five sides restored to us. But now we've got all five sides nicely flaring upward like that. And if we look nice and close, that tear is gone because they're all basically exactly the same. And that's a pretty nifty shape. So now I can come in here and continue to mess with these if I want to change their colors or I want to individually uh, change the shape of one of these surfaces. That's fine. You can keep on messing with these until you're done. Exit the group and now you've got that nice little, almost looks like a morning glory at this point. So any kind of pavilion roof, uh, a, a, a kiosk, uh, the the turret of an Oriel window. I mean, there's so many different ways that you could use this. It even kind of looks like the uh, the trumpet to uh, an old gramophone. Uh, lots of different things that you could use this command for. And once you learn Revolve with Rail, uh, once you get past the kind of the fussy setup of it, it gives you a lot of fun power. So hopefully you'll uh, be creating some really cool Chinese pagodas or whatever with your new skin skills with the Revolve with Rail. And if you'd like me to create a tutorial for your question, I'll do my best and just put a comment in the comment lines. And otherwise, uh, hopefully you uh, get some satisfaction with the Revolve with Rail command.